We're very pleased today on the PK Forum in New Mandala to have um, Professor Dr. Anton Vett, member of Myanmar's Peace Commission. And uh, obviously, Sao, there's a lot of analysis uh, around Myanmar's um, peace process. And but perhaps less analysis about the role of international, uh, international donors in that peace process. So I'm interested in particularly in your um, perspectives on, on how international aid can help with Myanmar's peace process. I think at the outset, um, the, the chairman of NRPC, uh, Doha Sasuchi, uh, recognised that uh, to have, uh, because as you mentioned rightly, a peace is a process, you know, it's not an event. So we need to think long term which then means that we need resources. So the aid uh, from international to partners will be critical. Uh, not that we will rely everything on international uh, donor, but uh, you know a substantial portion will be very important yeah. to help uh, the, the, the peace process move forward. Yeah. So in terms of not just uh, money, but yeah. also expertise, because many of the international partners have been involved in similar processes in other countries. So I think uh, we are hoping that the international partners will bring in not just resources but also expertise, lessons learned yeah. and back practices from you know other post-conflict situations. Yeah, okay. So any peace process is obviously a, a political process as well and uh, international donors who have um, tens of millions of dollars of, of, of resources. Obviously there's going to be some influence in that. So I'm, I'm interested in when there's any issues of, of accountability of donors in their influence in Myanmar's peace process. I think the issue is a very important one. Mm. Uh, you know, how do we establish uh, an accountability? Yeah. I think from the outset it is important that uh, we realise that it is a partnership, yeah. that the, the government is in the driving seat mm. and the government would dictate or, yeah. or at least in, through dialogue mm. with development partners, where are the priority areas? Mm. Because, as you know, development partners have their own competitive advantage. They would like to provide uh, aid in areas that they are more familiar with. Mm. So the question then becomes, the government uh, would need to ensure that the priorities are understood, mm. and therefore the donor, the aid that comes in, is uh, in these priority areas, yeah. rather than uh, what uh, what uh, satisfy or what motivates uh, individual donors? Mm, okay. So, so in terms of the, um, the the new joint coordinating body for aid to the peace process, how do you understand the role of that in in accountability for that? Yes, I think uh, this this mechanism uh, of coordination is very important because uh, we have different uh, donor groups, uh, different international partners, working sometimes bilaterally. Uh, with uh, what is now euphemistically called EAO, Ethnic Armed Organizations. Yeah. So the question is, uh, this coordination mechanism is not to stop mm. resources going into uh, different uh, ethnic uh, armed organizations, yeah. but to be very aware mm. of where the money is going, yeah. you know, what use is being made. Okay, yeah. So in terms of, uh, you know, because when you talk about aid, yeah. or resources, oftentimes the emphasis is on resources and inputs. Yes. I think for me, personally, the emphasis should be on outcomes. Yeah. You yeah. Know, what happens, you know, so the question is value for money. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. because the, the, it's not uh, the donor support, mm. it's not an open-ended one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we have to ensure that, you know, whatever dollar. Yeah. So what kind of outcomes would you be looking for from that aid? Well, the, the question is, you know, uh, in terms of the whole peace process, you yeah. know, uh, we have established uh, priority areas, uh, and uh, so hopefully, you know, the the, the the money that comes in yeah. will be focused on that, yes. and then, uh, you know, uh, if, uh, for example, the, uh, the the donor aid is directed towards, because I think uh, development uh, agencies across the world now have uh, very good accountability frameworks. Yes. You know, uh, I'm, yes. I'm sure uh, Australia has. Yeah. I know for a fact that Canadian yeah. uh, results-based management yes. and accountability framework is very, very uh, robust. Yes. So I hope that with their experience on mm. using accountability frameworks, mm. so we can we can piggyback yeah. on yeah. what the donors already are used to. Yes. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Sure. So the accountability, when you ask about the accountability, yeah. 
different donors have different frameworks, but essentially it's the same. Mm. It, it's based on logical framework analysis, yes. where you look at the issues, yeah. you do the root cause analysis, yeah. Yeah. based on that you, you have this response, mm. and for each of the response then you identify the resources that are going mm. into each area, and yeah. then the results, uh, expected results. Yes. So we, we follow and adopt a very common framework. Mm. But through that framework, donors need to be answerable to, um, to somebody. Sure. Yeah. And I guess the, the question with the joint coordinating body is, which has members of government and ethnic armed organisations, there's obviously other stakeholders in the peace process as well, if we're thinking of um, youth or women or um, civil society leaders. Or, how, how do you see donors being able to be accountable more broadly to those other groups as well? I think uh, I'm, I'm sure the donors yeah. uh, has already thought through. Yeah how they de deal with different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, although the stakeholders are important, but the main interlocutor yeah. in this uh, you know, coordinating uh, process yeah. is the government yes. and the EAO. Yes. And of course, when you talk the government, it also includes the Tamato. Yeah. So I think uh, not to minimize the role mm -hmm. of the youth and the gender, etc. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, if the major parties uh, to this process has agreed on a broad framework, yes, yeah. then, you know, uh, I'm sure they've also made sure that it's inclusive as possible, mm -hmm. which includes uh, the youth, the gender, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank, thank you so much for your time. No, thank you. Thank you.